So this first assignment, which is actually going to uh, allow you to create something, is something called figure field relationships. And that sounds kind of technical. It sounds kind of, uh, of uh, scientific, pseudoscientific. But it's really about how you perceive something as either a shape or the environment in which it's existing. Uh, almost like a grammar in a language. We're talking about the parts that go together to make any kind of artwork or design work that, uh, that has strong visual properties. So uh, with Canson paper, a kind of high class construction paper, you're gonna be creating collages, which for those of you who have not necessarily done that, done that before, they're simply glued pieces of paper on other pieces of paper. And with that process, where you're gonna, on your own, design and then create uh, one example of each of these five figure field relationships that are explained to the nth degree in terms of examples and in terms of the technical uh, means by which you're, you're putting them together. The materials you're going to use in this first project are, uh, first of all, a number of different kinds of papers. Uh, you have in your kit, rolled in a brown paper wrapping, these uh, sheets, larger sheets of Canson colored paper. You have a, a red, a gray, and a black. And for the collages that you're doing, you'll be, you'll be gluing them onto um, a Bristol board, which is a heavy stock uh, paper uh, to be found in a yellow pad in your kit, uh, so not surprisingly called Bristol board. Um, it's a heavy stock, it's a pure white. Uh, it will be the, the basic uh, surface on which you'll be doing both a lot of collaging and, and a bit of painting uh, toward uh, the middle of the semester as well, in the end of the semester. So uh, these four colors, the red, the gray, and the black, plus the white of the, of the, the Bristol board, are the colors you'll be using for the, for the collages. And although these are sort of thinner papers that are, that are easy to cut and, 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 and glue down, if you want to use a white shape with these, you can go into the Bristol board and cut that out as if it were some of these papers to be used as a, as a raw material for collage. So it's a simple matter of, uh, of, of first of all, describing uh, the direction of your design on your sketch pad. You have in your kit, I don't have it right now, but you have a, a, a pad of cheaper paper, a less expensive paper that is great for pencil sketches. And I, uh, as I'll mention in your, the text of this uh, assignment, you're going to be uh, doing a lot of ideas and, uh, and throwaway or evolved uh, designs as you, as you move along. Uh, just to give you, a, as you know at this point, that the, um, the idea of the kinds of things you'll be doing, you know, these are the simple figure fields. Uh, these become uh, other more complex forms as you go on, uh, uh, you'll have the full description of, the, of what's required in each one. But see how they can become fairly elaborate and personal, uh, although abstract, okay, as you, as you begin to, uh, to, to build them and design them. But I think most, mostly this particular uh, explanation uh, will, will concentrate on, for those of you who have not done it before, the straightforward um, cutting and gluing of the Canson papers uh, and the, and the uh, Bristol board. The adhesives, the glue, that you'll be using to, uh, to make these collages are first the, the, the one you're most likely to use. I hope most of you use it because it, it is the most easy to use, although it has some drawbacks, is the, is the rubber cement. Um, it is a screw top can with a kind of brush applicator on the inside. It's a bit nasty in, uh, in its aroma, so I would not do it uh, for too long inside a, a closed off space. Um, but it's, um, it's, it's, it gives you the opportunity to move things around, to, to peel them off if necessary, and it really cleans up beautifully because once you let it dry, uh, it can be peeled off uh, like, a, like a kind of excess uh, margin uh, and, and leave a, a surface that it's incredibly uh, clean. So the other thing you have, which I don't have in front of me, is the regular, most of you used a glue stick. If you use the glue stick as an alternative to the, to the rubber cement, the drawback is that it's kind of lumpy, that it's not, uh, doesn't clean up as, as well, and that it's uh, a little bit stiff and uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't adhere uh, the, the papers as well as the, the rubber cement. 
with the actual cutting out and, and gluing process, uh, you're first going to be aware of the, of the tool that's in your kit. Many of you have probably used something like this before, but it is a number 11 uh, X-Acto knife. It's very sharp and you have to respect the fact that it's, it's very dangerous. You don't want to keep this, this uh, cover off it if, you're, if it's just carried around in your, in your kit bag. So keep it covered when you're not using it. And obviously, you know, you're, you're all adults and you know what to do and not do. But at the same time, uh, when you get too far into your work, you get too fr frenzied into the, the activity that you're doing, you've got to still be aware that you've not got <laughs> fingers and thumbs and uh, your own personal uh, uh, body in the, in the path of this thing. And it is good to, um, to cut things on a permeable surface. Now, no, none of you have in your kit uh, an expensive uh, self-healing cutting board, but I would uh, recommend that you use the back of one of your pads. You, know, you don't have to cut all the way through, and it, it forms a nice surface in which the blade can sink a little bit and become a lot safer in terms of its, uh, in terms of its uh, movement. So, with, given, the, given the, the scale and... Uh, thickness of this paper, um, one fell swoop, one particular push through of a, of a knife pass should do it for these, um, for these cuts. Of course, my blade happens to be kind of dull at this point, but um, if you can get that shape away from its away from its, its body of paper, um, you are next take, taking some scrap paper, not your Bristol board, maybe your sketch pad paper if you have a bunch and you're not using a lot, but I've got some scrap drawing paper. And for the gluing itself, say I'm going to use this as a shape that goes in, in this particular corner uh, of the Bristol board, and I've just uh, almost arbitrarily given myself a ruler-wide margin uh, for this particular um, uh, construction. You can make them a little bit smaller than this. Uh, you can't make them any larger than this, but I would keep at least a half inch to an inch and a half uh, margin around your, your, uh, your composition. It just sets it off nicely, and if you put so much work into it to make it a, a beautiful design, you know, give it the, 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 the most spectacular presentation it can have. So with the rubber cement, if you've not used it before, I'm taking uh, the screw top applicator and not loading it up too much, but still having a, a fair amount on there. Okay, not so it's dripping, but that it's, it's loaded in a way. And if you have the scrap paper in back, okay, you can start in the center of the, of the form and move out to the edges. You don't, nothing worse than, you don't want to do um, a gluing job whereby the edges are always lifting up. You've got beautiful shapes, you've got a beautiful design but then the craft itself becomes a kind of noise that, that takes away from the beauty of what, what you've, uh, you've composed. So, so I'm not worrying about where this goes because I've got a scrap paper underneath and I'm putting on a moderate, even amount. You know, hard, hard to describe it, not too thin, not too thick. Just make sure it's, it's spread across the entire area and especially, because it's easy to avoid them, especially on those uh, those borders that are going to be uh, the edges of the form. And again, arbitrarily, I'm just deciding to put this in a given place. I'm putting it where I want it, all right? And mo see how easily it moves with the rubber cement, okay? Uh, it can be positioned where you want it. In fact, you don't have to glue it right away. You can begin to do a number of forms that would uh, then, um, that would then, be glued down. You don't have to glue everything right away. You can tr test things first and see how they look. But if you want to begin gluing, when you want to begin gluing, you're doing this. You're, you're putting the glue on the back, you're pressing it into the, the, bre the Bristol board, and you're taking another scrap piece of paper, and you know, without marring it by running your hands through it, simply press and make sure all the, all the edges are down. So with the glue stick, you're turning it out to, uh, to get the stick um, usable, and you are rubbing it onto the back. You can see it's more lumpy 
and bumpy and a little bit more irregular than the rubber cement. Again, I'm using a kind of scrap piece of paper and going out to the edges to, uh, to make it completely stick. Taking that, putting it wherever I want to, just arbitrarily sticking it in this corner. And then again, with, uh, with another scrap piece of paper, you are pressing it down. And it should adhere quite nicely. So I want to remind you that you've been delivered uh, through email, along with the video link, uh, a text, a kind of uh, written explanation of this assignment. And so you want to make sure you, you've read through that, uh, get back to me with any questions, uh, and then uh, review these visual examples that I'm going to go through shortly. Um, this is a, a kind of agglomeration of, of, of particular good examples of the figure fields. And you can see the diversity, especially when, when things get uh, uh, complex. So uh, read the text, look at the examples, and also use your sketch pad as um, a notebook, a kind of uh, uh, experimental area that's not going to be graded, that's just going to go through a lot of ideas at first. And of course, when you're putting these things together, there is no reason why you can't change, why you don't have to glue, thing, why you have to glue things down right away, how things can be moved around and decided uh, somewhat beforehand, or evolved as you're, uh, as you're moving through the creation of the collage. What I'd like to show you now are examples of the simple figure, simple field. Okay? And you're probably safest in, uh, in going for the, the most simple of each. In some ways, even though it's the word simple, uh, it's really perhaps one of the more sophisticated and, and difficult ones to, uh, to create something that's interesting. You know, it's plunk down a square, plunk down a circle, circle uh, have a blank piece of color in back, the background, uh, yes, they're both simple, but how can you transform that, uh, that challenge of sim simplicity into something that is visually interesting and creative? As you, as you can see, um, these are all simple figures, but they're touching one another. And there's a kind of tumbling stack here that, that makes them more animated. So even though you're talking about very simple geometric shapes, which aren't necessarily all you have to do, uh, you're, you're not you're not uh, limited to geometric shapes, but uh, but it's it could be more animated and interesting if you begin to put them together and sort of suggest physical forces at work in the composition. Just as we talked about uh, physical forces in the last one, uh, in this one here, it's almost like the little red ball is stopping that big gray thing from rolling to the the center of gravity at the bottom of the of the circular field. So, you know, if, if, if you think about simple, simple, this is an incredibly sophisticated uh, composition that is done with the simplest of, uh, of shapes. So obviously simple uh, figures here, a triangle and a kind of elongated rectangle. Uh, what's nice about it, I think, is that it would be so easy to just plunk things in the center and one of the things about design that might be hard to, or at least uh, um, difficult to overcome, is our tendency to put things in the center and make them symmetrical all the time. Uh, even though th these are simple figures and a very simple field, see how they at least break up the idea that things have to be balanced in some sort of, uh, of mathematical way. Not too much to say about this one, except that uh, you, you have an implied kind of overlapping with the, with the size changes. Uh, and uh, you know, fairly straightforward thing that, again, as I said in the last one, isn't uh, mathematically symmetrical. This next one, a fairly straightforward uh, black circle chaos, small and large, uh, larger uh, circles. Uh, there's a nice spatial difference uh, between the, the two uh, sizes. And I especially like the idea that the, the background is tipped and sort of uh, listing to one side. It makes it more dynamic. It makes it more irregular, it makes it less expected. There's a kind of energy to it because of the, uh, the irregularity. 
while still a simple field here, there's really a kind of uh, stronger depth than we've seen in many of the others because of the size changes of the, of the squares, but also because of the two gray elements in there where uh, things are peeking behind or coming out uh, in front of. So it's a more dynamic space uh, because of that, while still keeping to the idea that it's simple figure, simple field. And to me, the beautiful thing about this one, finally, and you're welcome to really chase this as much as possible, is the simple figure doesn't necessarily have to be uh, absolutely perfect. It can still be a simple shape, but have a, a little bit of organic irregularity to it. And although I'd rather not have a whole class uh, full of, of these kinds of solutions, there is the possibility, there is the kind of almost visual joke of, uh, of having something so minimal, so... Uh, so uh, quiet and obvious and to the point of being simple, simple, that uh, this is a, it's really uh, an interesting solution. So finally, uh, we get to something a little more interesting. And the simple, simple is just that uh, and kind of boring. But uh, here, with the complex aspects of both field and figure, you end up being much more creative, much more complex, much more artful in your own personality, in your own design. As with this one, with the, again, straightforward black uh, circles, but a much more organic kind of uh, semi-terrifying background or field. And look at with the complex field, how they are not simply uh, a bunch of separate floating things, that they're not, uh, they're not clusters of, of things that are sort of figures in themselves, but they really weave a kind of continuity. They don't have to be regular or geometric, but they do have a kind of jungle or uh, you know, organic kind of, uh, of area that, uh, that, that moves across the surface uh, with a kind of family resemblance of shapes. Finally, we get, to, we get a figure, a simple figure for sure, that's, uh, that's away from the circle. So these, these funny little red arrows going upward are in a kind of uh, miasma, a kind of jungle, a kind of um, a density of gray and black forms that have a kind of, fa again, a fa family resemblance that seems to make them a kind of continuity and a kind of space. And look at how things uh, slip behind and go in front of to give you a spatial feel. What's neat about this, uh, this simple figure for sure is that it's, it's uh, very simple, but at the same time, there's a kind of negative space in between, the kind of negative cutout in it, and it gives a kind of uh, continuity to the to the background complex uh, field. And look at the the visual vibration in, in the, the background field. It's almost like a kind of wacky cubist uh, checkerboard that has a number of different angles and a and a kind of uh, funhouse mirror uh, distortion to everything. So one of the, the puzzlements about these kinds of assignments is that, uh, you know, I've asked you to be abstract. That means that uh, they're pure shapes and, and colors and form and not anything from the real world. However, you know, especially if you're, you're stuck for shapes or if you just think intuitively this way, you know, choose something or, or, or be drawn to something in the real world, but simplify it, bash it around a bit, change it, distort it. So that, uh, you know, this, this might be uh, based on, this thing in front of us might be based on, you know, Tom Brady's football in a kind of strange ocean with, uh, you know, stealth, uh, stealth fighter planes flying behind it. So uh, you can see how a complex field, a uh, simple figure, really becomes uh, an opportunity to do many, many different individual things. You know, I love what's happening with the with the elliptical uh, forms that are surrounding these white elements in the field. Uh, you know, it's, it's much more unexpected, much more uh, individual, and much more expressive than, uh, than the simple simples. So again, a kind of deep space where things are partially hidden behind elements of the complex field. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a very simple palette uh, of gray, black, and white that still becomes a kind of strong graphic design. And this kind of uh, never-ending plane of red and white stripes down the bottom, because it diminishes in, its, in the horizontal uh, lines, they get thinner and thinner as they go back, 
and because the, the triangles seem to diminish in terms of their size as they go back, you really end up with, uh, with a kind of perspective space that's beautiful. So here you have this uh, very brilliant and sort of energetic and almost scribbly kind of, um, of figure that is very complex and then obviously a field that is uh, uh, very minimalist and, and, and uh, straightforward. Uh, I love the difference between the kind of uh, calligraphic stuff in the, in the figure as opposed to the field. And of course, we were talking about how things might be grabbed from the real world. Again, with this uh, this complex figure, you know, on a simple field, you end up with things that might be related to brambles and trees and organic branching and uh, and forms in nature. So again, forms in nature, some sort of organic uh, cell creature, uh, a sort of uh, paramecium here that's been beat up. As I remember the construction of this one, uh, what, uh, what the woman did was to not simply cut out those white, strange shapes, but she much more uh, logically and perhaps e more easily, craft-wise, she cut out uh, those shapes in a black piece of paper and then put it on top of the whiteboard. So you ended up with uh, you know, much more detail, much more thin, almost drawn line and specs uh, that was able to be done because she did a kind of negative cutout on a, a larger piece of paper. So sometimes the, the teacher can be worn down. And although I've been making a lot of uh, noises about, about things being abstract, uh, there was this one fellow a couple of years ago who is indeed a tattoo artist. And uh, because he was so meticulously uh, skillful about this uh, marvelously satanic image that he had here. Uh, uh, he did a, a wonderful solution for the complex on simple that was related to his everyday work. And al although we've just got, uh, you know, black, white, gray, red pieces of paper, uh, you really can, uh, depending on the shapes and the, and the placement, you really can begin to, to imply a kind of, uh, a kind of explosion, a kind of energy, a kind of, um, of absolute um, dynamism in a particular kind of uh, composition. Okay, one of the, the neat things about uh, design, any kind of art really, but especially design because you're dealing with concepts and, and sources in the outside world all the time, is that uh, you know, you've got a major. You've got a major in history, you've got a major in, uh, in English, you've got a major in biology or, or, or science or, or uh, physics, whatever. You know. Uh, there's no reason why you can't borrow, transform, and play with uh, the subjects in your, in your real concentration, your real uh, major in, in academia here. So these, to me, are obviously uh, nerve cells. Now, sometimes you, you do find uh, people with uh, enormous patience and enormous skill. Now, the, the spectacular thing about this is that indeed uh, those white lines are not a white magic marker of some sort of a, mad, a marker of some sort of paint or a pencil, but they are indeed very meticulously cut out uh, strips of, of white paper. Uh, so it becomes a kind of calligraphy of line on top of a simple field. And sometimes it's uh, curiously uh, surprising that an abstract form. Uh, can be almost humorous. You know, to me, this is uh, this is almost like a cartoon scene, some sort of uh, strange uh, joke uh, that's in a graphic novel or in a cartoon strip. So, with the complex on complex, you can really uh, shift into high gear. Uh, you're really talking about and, and, and working with. Uh, inventive form, unexpected form, you know, your particular personal kind of form or from whatever source that, uh, that you might get it from. And in this one, of course, the, the complex white figure there has escaped its, its pen, escaped its room, escaped its jail cell, and is going out into the margin. 
And color-wise and shape-wise, I think this one here is, is very strong, especially like the vibration of the X's against the, the red borders that are kind of organic and floating. This one here is uh, uh, challenging to talk about because uh, although it's a complex figure in a complex field, it's almost as though the, fig the elements of the figure and the elements of the field have collided and jumbled up against each other. It's also very much uh, reminiscent of what art historians and artists would call Russian constructivism, a uh, style of art in the Soviet Union in the early 20th century. And here the complex figure is almost interwoven into this uh, chain link fence or diagonal uh, uh, crossing of the field and back, uh, beautiful organic shape, and it really pops, the white pops against the other colors. Now, although I, I, I see a real difference between the, the complex figure, which I believe is the, is the curvilinear stuff on top uh, and the sort of uh, rectilinear architectural stuff in the, in the background, you know, there is a, a beautiful uh, dynamic between the two. Okay, and this one, simply a strong popping contrast between the red complicated uh, uh, figure and the complication of the, of the field in the background. I, I keep seeing snakeskin, I keep seeing Indian corn, I keep seeing, you know, tiles. Uh, you know, things can be abstracted from the real world, as I've said before. And we talked about sources of different things, and there's, there's no reason why you can't get... Uh, Sort of cartoony and uh, graphic, graphic novelly, in a sense. Uh, you know, there's there's a beautiful sort of awkwardness and a kind of childlike energy to something like this, which is a, a complex uh, microwave oven with octopus uh, tentacles against a kind of vibratory field in the background. And although most of the figures and fields in the complex. Uh, Figures and fields that we're looking at are, are sort of very different between uh, what's up front, what's in back. I love the fact that there's a kind of family resemblance, a kind of, um, of um, uh, scale and complex uh, similarity between the forms of, that are the, the, the field and the form that is the figure. It's almost a kind of uh, strange creature that's creeping across this, this environment. And here we have a, another, for me, a kind of humorous thing where there's a reversed cue of some sort, and there's a wonderful uh, sort of Alice in Wonderland checkerboard that's uh, that's bowing out towards us. White, uh, slimy, creepy, entangled aliens in this uh, this field of, of rays of gray and and red and black. almost a kind of seashell against uh, the red and black uh, field. And to continue the, the ocean theme, uh, here's a kind of uh, gray octopus that's entangled in something or other in the background. And no doubt the same meticulous student who, who cut the, uh, the white line in the previous one uh, did this one too, the complex on complex. Now, because uh, with the reversible figure field, uh, you end up with uh, a kind of puzzlement and a kind of uh, uh, indecipherability or a kind of indecision about what's figure, what's field. You think about the checkerboard. You think about uh, the good old psych uh, textbook base face. You are completely flipping you know, what's in front, what's in back in each one of these things. If you stare at this one, you know, it's, it's hardly a, a checkerboard or some kind of base face, but uh, it is, as you stare at it, you know, either these red elements that are floating in a black space or the black elements that are floating in the red space. And the reversibles don't have to be complex. They could be uh, you know, fairly simple organic shapes with, uh, with fairly large scale um, areas. Love the angles, love the sort of energy, love the kind of lightning bolt uh, uh, excitement of this one. You know, sometimes symmetry does work. So I, I love the fact that uh, when these forms invade that black rectangle, that they, they reverse their colors and become uh, you know, hard to read in terms of what's in front and what's in back. 
So here's one that, that dares to use uh, three colors in the reversible. It's usually you know, most straightforward, most powerful if you're using two colors. But as you stare at this, uh, you flip back and forth as, as to whether or not the white is the space, or the black is the space, or the gray is the space. Very strong reversible or, or ambiguous figure field here, and almost elegant minimalism in terms of the proportion and the angles and the placement. A busier kind of organic and nature-oriented uh, chaos here, uh, to me almost looks like uh, a kind of graffiti or a kind of busyness uh, that's been uh, that's been painted. Is it a window on a black space or is it Darth Vader's Swiss cheese? Busy, busy, energetic decoration. Gorgeous complexity in this one. Here's the, op here's the opposite, a kind of severe uh, geometry and repetition, which if you're really careful about it, even if there's a little bit of irregularity, uh, if you line things up as best you can, uh, the, that kind of repetition creates a kind of vibration and moiré pattern. So very often uh, complicated figure feels you know, become vibrational and almost what was considered in the, in the early 1960s as op art or optical art. Although very simple, uh, you know, straightforward design, really powerful in terms of that being either a kind of crack to a darkened space beyond or, or uh, a, a darkened uh, lightning bolt that's on a red sky. Now this particular design really brings up the uh, issue of using other kinds of tools, other kinds of, um, of instruments to cut out various sorts of shapes. Now notice in this one that, that students really used uh, a punch, a paper punch, and is eaten into the black to make uh, all sorts of dots that then uh, are put on top of the white field that uh, then become uh, um, elaborate sorts of things that are, that are falling and floating. And this obviously is uh, a kind of really intense and complicated uh, reversible uh, figure field. It goes with this, this last, last batch of, of figure field relationships. So what you've seen in all of these um, is the variety, the kind of endless uh, invention that you can use when you are uh, designing and, and making these things. Spend some time when you're, with your sketch pad. That you don't have to use a full piece of paper on each one. Maybe divide it into four uh, on each each paper uh, sheet and, and uh, do uh, examples of each one of these, four examples, three or four examples of each one of these, and uh, just, just get into the rhythm of thinking about how these things might work. So I'm looking forward to uh, all of your responses to each one of these things, and since you've seen so many different examples, uh, I'm pretty sure that you can come up with uh, equally, if not more so, uh, creativity and uh, individuality in each one of these exercises. So you're welcome to get back to me at any time with uh, in-progress uh, images and uh, any questions you may have.